Good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to a new review. For today we have a new tablet from China that has decent specs, has a nice 1080p display and runs Windows 10. This costs about $160-$180 depending where you buy it from and this is called the Jumper EasyPad 5SE. Starting with a very quick unboxing, so the tablet comes in a rather large box but we don't get any information on the box. Inside the box you're gonna find the tablet itself, you're gonna find the USB cable, this is a micro USB cable and you can use that for charging the tablet, you're gonna find the user manual, however the user manual is mostly in Chinese, and lastly you're gonna find the stylus pen. Now this looks very similar to the stylus that you'd find on a Samsung Note for example. The stylus, it's made out of plastic and I have to say that it does feel kind of flimsy and cheap and on top of that we don't even have a place on the tablet where to store this so most likely you're gonna lose this because um, since there is no place on the tablet where to keep it you're gonna have to keep it next to the tablet somewhere. There is also a button on the side of the stylus and you can access different things on the tablet uh, by pressing that uh, button so this basically becomes the left click of the mouse. There are two ways of using it, the first one would be to actually touch the screen with a pen and the second one would be to just hover on top of the screen, so about a centimeter away from the screen and the screen will register that you have the pen right above it. This could be useful if you like drawing or sketching or anything like that and of course there are a lot of apps available in the Windows Store for that purpose. For specs we have an Intel Z8300 CPU, this is a quad core uh, processor, we also have 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. Out of that 64 gigs of internal storage we only get about 26-27 gigs left and the speeds that I got for the internal storage are not the absolute best, however for a tablet that costs about $150-$180 I think they are rather decent. We also have a 10.6 inches IPS display with a 1080p resolution. The viewing angles on this screen are ok, not the absolute best, the colors are nice and vibrant and the screen does seem to get quite bright, however there is a lot of reflection happening on the screen so any lights that you have above you will actually show up on the screen which is a bit annoying at times. As for the screen sensitivity, this is not the absolute best screen that I've tried, however it is usable uh, for day to day tasks. Size wise the tablet is a bit big for a tablet that has a 10.6 inches screen and I have to say that it is a bit heavy so if you're actually holding this in one hand your hand is gonna start hurting after a while. The back of the tablet it's made out of plastic but we have a metallic stand on the back there that um, opens and it's very easy to actually place this tablet on a desk or on a table or anything like that and the tablet will stand by itself. On top you're gonna find the volume buttons and the power button and there is also a microphone um, right about there. On the left hand side you're gonna find the USB 3 port, you're also gonna find the micro USB port and you can actually charge the tablet um, to that uh, micro USB port. There is also a mini HDMI port and a port for a power adapter, however the tablet doesn't come with a power adapter. And we also have a speaker on the left hand side. On the other side we have the second speaker and even though we have dual speakers they don't sound the absolute best so they don't get that loud and um, if you're in a noisy environment it's kind of difficult to hear whatever is happening on the tablet. Aside from that you're gonna find a slot for a micro SD card, another USB port and a 3.5mm audio jack. We also have a camera on the front and a camera on the back and both cameras are 2 megapixel um, sensors and the pictures that you take with these cameras are not the best. So these cameras are only gonna be good for video calling and uh, stuff like that because for taking pictures with them uh, the pictures don't turn out that great. And lastly at the bottom of the tablet you're gonna find a port where you could attach a keyboard. Unfortunately it doesn't come with a keyboard and if you wanna buy a keyboard that's about 60-80 bucks uh, from what I've seen online. So rather expensive for a keyboard for this. There is also a 6600 mAh battery inside this tablet and that's a rather large uh, battery for a tablet but it will really depend how you use this because if you play a lot of games and stuff like that the battery will deplete uh, sooner so it really depends how you're planning to use this because if you're just browsing and stuff like that it will last quite some time but if you do some graphics intensive tasks well it's not gonna last as long. For connectivity we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi but you can only connect to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi networks and the speeds that I got over Wi-Fi well they are not the absolute best they are kind of low. However I was watching some YouTube videos uh, connected to the Wi-Fi and they do seem to work ok. And since we are talking about uh, YouTube videos, if you are using Microsoft Edge all the YouTube videos that you are gonna watch uh, go very smooth at 1080p. However, if you are using Chrome, well, they don't go that smooth for some reason. So keep that in mind for um, 
YouTube videos basically. Now that we've seen how the tablet looks, I'm gonna start recording the screen, we'll do a couple of benchmark tests, uh, I'm gonna try some video files, I'll play a game so we have a better idea about the performance for this tablet. So first of all, this is running a full version of Windows 10 and you can make this look like a tablet or just like a Windows PC. For example, right now I have this connected to my uh, TV, so now I could use it as uh, a PC. But you can just make this uh, look uh, like a tablet if that's uh, easier for you. So this would be the tablet mode. Of course, we have Cortana available and uh, you can just talk and ask for pretty much any information available uh, online. And I'm just going to start by showing you the settings app um, very quickly. So let's go on to settings here. And um, if we go to Windows uh, Update and Security, so let me just uh, open that. Uh, this device gets updates. I got a whole bunch of updates uh, over the past two days, uh, so it is up to date uh, right now. And if we click on activation, um, you're going to see that uh, Windows is activated. Uh, I just want to show you quickly the, the storage available. So although that's 64 gigs um, of storage available, um, so if I go here to battery, no, uh, storage I mean, um, you can see that I have uh, about 34 gigs uh, used. I do have a couple of uh, things installed, so I've been taking some of the space. But technically you have about 26, 27 gigs um, of available space. Keep in mind that you could always install uh, an SD card or an external hard drive or anything like that uh, for more storage. For our first benchmark test, we get a score of 565. And this is basically the same for all the other devices that I tested with the same uh, CPU and RAM. So um, here if I press OK, uh, we can check um, the details for this. So if we go to home here, we can see everything about uh, this tablet. So let me just uh, zoom this out. So uh, this is the graphics card. We already knew that though. Moving to the storage, so um, we have some type of a uh, Samsung uh, storage in this uh, tablet. This is the CPU that we already know, so we have the Z8300. Moving back, uh, and this is going to be the RAM, so we have about 4 gigs of RAM, but uh, not that much available at this time. And moving back one more time, we can see the motherboard. And on the second benchmark test, on the Geekbench 4, we get a multi-core score of 1677 and a single-core score of 700. And I believe that I've seen this type of CPU and RAM with the higher scores on the Geekbench 4. Compared to other uh, mini PCs and tablets that I tried in the past, um, this does seem a bit slower uh, than other ones. So I'm just going to start opening a whole bunch of... Uh, things here so you can uh, have a better idea of what I'm talking about. So it is a bit uh, slower than uh, most other devices with the exact same specs and I'm not sure why um, that is but as you can probably tell um, it's kind of struggling to, to open a whole bunch of things and now it's kind of uh, almost frozen. So yeah definitely not the absolute fastest uh, tablet out there but for the price uh, considering that you get such a big screen at 10 uh, 1080p screen, uh, I think it's kind of worth it, uh, not to mention that we have that uh, HDMI out, uh, output and you can always uh, use this uh, as a mini computer on your TV or anything like that, basically as a media center. For our next test I have my USB stick plugged in and I'm going to try a couple of files here. I have the VLC media player um, installed as well, some of these files uh, will try with the Windows media player though. So this one, uh, for example, I know that it works uh, the best uh, with the Windows Media Player, so we'll try that. And uh, I've already tried this file, so I do know uh, that they work. I'm just going to skip forward a bit. And as you can probably tell, uh, this one does uh, pretty good. So we'll stop this one. I want to get to those 4K files that um, I have there. So let's uh, see this one first. This is also with the Windows Media Player and this one also does uh, good but the files that I wanted to get um, were these ones, the 4K files from here. So open with and we'll try with the VLC Media Player and see what happens, see if uh, it can actually play them. With the Windows Media Player uh, it cannot. So we'll give it a second and see what happens. 
but uh, no, I wasn't expecting that um, the player will uh, make such a big difference. So yeah, 4K files, um, you won't be able to play on this uh, device uh, with any player that uh, you're going to try, basically. Moving on to a 720p file, this one of course will do just fine. I'm going to skip uh, forward. And as I was expecting, uh, it does work uh, very good. Moving to the next file, uh, I guess we'll try this one. Of course, this one will also work uh, pretty good. We'll skip all the way to the end here. And as you can probably tell, uh, it is very clear and it does uh, work very good. The next one, it's this one. And again, this one will also do good. And again, very, very clear and uh, very smooth. And moving to this one, this is a 4K file, but it's at 24 frames per second. So it doesn't go totally smooth, but uh, at least uh, we have the ability to actually play it. Because the other uh, 4K files at uh, 60 frames per second and at 50 frames per second don't actually work. And let's try the next one, this one with the VLC player, see if it actually plays. We'll give it a second. But um, I highly, highly doubted it. Oh, look at that. Doesn't actually go. We can see the picture, but it doesn't actually move. But um, I just wanted to try and see if um, it would work. But um, yeah, that was the VLC player. So basically most 1080p files uh, will do fine as long as they're not uh, some crazy big files. But uh, again, it really depends uh, what you're expecting from a tablet that's uh, so cheap. But for YouTube, for some videos, for downloading movies, uh, I think this is uh, pretty good. For our next test, I have Asphalt Extreme and I'm going to play uh, for a bit so you have a better idea how well uh, some games do on this little tablet. So I downloaded this game right from the Windows Store and uh, I did try this uh, before. It's not the best uh, playing experience. I mean, it's not going to be as a gaming console, for example, but it does uh, do fairly good uh, considering the price of this. So I'm just going to maximize this. And let's just uh, play for a bit and uh, see how well it does. Of course, I am playing with the tablet and I'm uh, moving the tablet left, right uh, to actually do this. So I'm not using a keyboard. A couple of frames dropped here uh, and there as you can probably tell, but overall it does uh, seem to do okay uh, for a device uh, with this CPU and RAM. But for sure, I've, I've seen this uh, being played much better uh, on other uh, mini PCs with uh, these exact same specs. So that's how gaming will do. So not uh, absolutely amazing, but uh, for some games it's going to be okay. So overall, for a tablet that costs about 160 bucks, um, considering that it has a 10.6 inch screen, I think it's pretty good to like watch movies and um, watch some uh, YouTube videos and so on, do some office uh, like Word and Excel and uh, so on every now and then. It's not a powerhouse, so don't imagine that this is going to be a powerhouse at any point, but um, for daily tasks uh, that don't involve a lot of uh, processing, I think it's good enough. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.